Good evening. First tonight, the father of a young woman gunned down in a busy pub on Christmas Eve has returned to the scene to pay tribute to his daughter. Ellie Edwards was shot in the head at the Lighthouse pub in Wallasey Village. Police have renewed their appeal to try to find her killer and the gun that fired the fatal shot. Rob Smith has the latest. This pub's still sealed off tonight as forensics teams continue to gather evidence, continue to look for those traces that will lead them to the person responsible for ending Ellie Edwards' life on Christmas Eve and to the gun that was used to do that, a crucial piece of evidence that police still don't have. The 26-year-old shot dead while out celebrating with friends. Police do not believe she was the intended target, and they said today that they have received, quote, tremendous intelligence from the community as they try to get justice for her and her heartbroken family. Her devastated dad came to the makeshift memorial of flowers today, spent time with people people who are laying them, people who just come to remember Ellie and shed tears, a lot of tears shed. And it was also to the memorial that police came to say that they will relentlessly pursue those behind this, those who may be harbouring them, those who may know where that gun is. This is not the first time in, this, in Merseyside that we've seen the fatalities, particularly those caught up who were in the right place at the right time. The offenders were not, who were doing the wrong things that cannot be tolerated in our society. I know I speak on behalf of everybody in this area and I certainly speak on behalf of Merseyside Police that will not rest until this person is behind bars, hopefully for the rest of their lives. And it is worth noting tonight that there are two people still being questioned by police. A 30-year-old man from Tranmere arrested on suspicion of murder and attempted murder and a 19-year-old woman from Rock Ferry arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to murder. Next, campaigners say victims of domestic abuse with sight loss are being put at risk because of a lack of accessible support. New research seen exclusively by ITV News reveals more than 20,000 victims of domestic abuse with sight loss are in the northwest, but fewer than one in five professionals have the specialist training to support them. Catherine Walker has this special investigation. I used to shake when I heard his key in the door and I'd be worried about, you know, would he be in a good mood, would he be in a bad mood. Sam, whose name we've changed to protect her identity, suffered years of abuse from her husband. Both emotional and physical, he used her disability as a weapon against her. The situation was fairly complex because he was my carer. I felt like I was being punished for being blind. He'd leave things out, so I'd fall every little dig that, that could have possibly happened, happened. New research seen by ITV News shows there's more than 20,000 victims of domestic abuse with sight loss in the northwest. Overall, people with visual impairments are nearly twice as likely to be the victim of domestic abuse. But less than one in five professionals have the specialist training to help them. People told us when we interviewed them that what they, they weren't really able to see professionals on their own in a safe way. They quite often will have a carer there that might be the perpetrator um, and uh, this meant that there's limited opportunities for them to be able to disclose abuse and be asked about the abuse that they're facing. The research from Safe Lives and the Vision Foundation is the most extensive of its kind. Among its recommendations are calls for more training around confidentiality and accessibility, a move welcomed by domestic abuse workers. I'd certainly welcome more training for our team on um, disability. Um, and um, I think more broadly, I would really welcome the chance for people who work with disabilities to get more training around domestic abuse and for us to be able to work more closely together. In a statement, the government said they are increasing the number of domestic abuse experts trained to help disabled victims. But Sam and other survivors say they won't feel safe until services step up their accessibility. Catherine Walker, ITV News. A man has died two weeks after a house fire which took the life of his fiancée. Kieran Naylor, who was 33, died in hospital on Boxing Day. His fiancée, Rebecca Foster, died a day after the fire at the couple's home in Darsbury in Cheshire. 
In a tribute, Kieran's family said he will be reunited with Rebecca forever and they will always be in their hearts. Next, you may remember we followed the story of Hallie Campbell from Wigan, who was born with a rare genetic condition which left her effectively locked in her own body. Our cameras followed the six-year-old as she went to Poland for experimental brain surgery back in 2019. Well, three years on, Mel Barham has been back to see the progress she's making. When we first met Hallie over three years ago, she was a six-year-old girl effectively locked inside her own body. I almost like can't believe how like, poorly and fragile that she was. She used to feed through a tube 20 hours a day. She couldn't hold her head up. We'd have to like sit her on our knee and prop her up and hold her head. And obviously the seizures as well, that was probably the worst one for us. Like hours and hours a day of, you know, her just being in excruciating pain. It was just awful. <laughs> This was one of those seizures, a daily occurrence that could last for hours. Hallie was born with a rare genetic brain condition called AADC deficiency. A bit like Parkinson's disease, it left her unable to walk, talk or even sit up by herself. Facing a poor prognosis, Hallie's family took a leap of faith and decided to try experimental brain surgery offered at this hospital in Poland. The gene therapy costs £70,000, much of that raised through the generosity of Granada Report's viewers. And in November 2019, our cameras followed as she became only the eighth child to have the procedure there. Let's do some walking there. Fast forward three years, and this is Hallie today. Hell yeah. Clever. Nine years old, and not only have the seizures stopped, yeah. but she's learning to walk, talk, and use sign language. Just started off signing, so you can sign your friend's name, Hungry. That's one of Hallie's favourites for food. Hungry. <laughs> I can't even explain, but it's just so lovely to see Hallie just loving and enjoying life and interacting with everybody and playing with her toys and she absolutely just loves life. She's such a happy little girl. And just like the simple thing of looking at Hallie just sitting up on her own. Yeah, I used to have to sit her on my knee and just cradle her all the time. Yeah. And you know, she couldn't really communicate for herself. The only way she could communicate with us was with a smile really, whereas now she's like so affectionate, so loving, so kind and caring. <laughs> It was a huge decision to put Hallie forward for treatment that was still being trialled. But looking back now, the family have no regrets. There was just something in me that I just knew that, you know, I needed to do this for Hallie. And I'm just so glad that we did. I just felt like the universe had our back. <laughs> you know, I think without gene therapy, this could have been a completely different story. But this story now, I feel like it's just a lovely story of like hope, healing and happiness, really. It's lovely. Does Hallie want a sticker? Oh, she's cute. And as for those who helped them, the family say they can't thank people enough. Absolutely forever grateful to everybody that made this possible for Hallie because, you know, without, you know, the generous viewers and, you know, everybody that helped to make this possible, everybody that donated has absolutely changed Hallie's life for the better and just made her who she is today. Can Mel have a sticker? <gasps> so all they wanted was to stop Hallie's painful seizures. The bonus has been unlocking their little girl's potential. Mel Barham, ITV News, Wigan. Getting that winning feeling. FOW, sponsors of the Granada Sport Report. Manchester City return to Premier League action tonight. They're away at Leeds with all eyes on City's Erling Haaland, who was born in Leeds 22 years ago, while his father Alf Inger played for the Yorkshire club. Leeds manager Jesse Marsh has praised Haaland in the build-up, but City boss Pep Guardiola says it's unlikely to soften him up. They want to win, we want to win. They will push his team. It will not be a friendly game. Hopefully... Erling cannot be contaminated with the nice words for the Open. Burnley restored a three-point lead at the top of the championship. Vincent Kompany's side were 3-0 winners against Birmingham City at Turf Moor. The Clarets have lost only two of their 24 league games this season. Elsewhere in the Football League, Bolton Wanderers were held to a goalless draw by Derby County in League One. 
Finally, to the famous fundraiser who's hanging up his speedos after one last challenge. Speedo makers raised more than £800,000 over the last eight years in challenges and collecting outside his beloved Goodison Park. Tomorrow he'll start his final walk from John O'Groats to Land's End to raise money for mental health charities and his own foundation. He's hoping his final challenge will break the £1 million mark. It's been like a, a very long hard campaign you know I've, I've i've pounded the pavements basically and, I, and i've done it as much as i possibly can i'm feeling like i say i'm feeling me eat a little bit so i just want to do this this one last thing say thank you very much to everybody and uh, you know go and spend time with my family man <laughs> maybe even go on a holiday <laughs> and good luck to him now for the weather here's ross Why do I need a shower? I've been out in the rain. The faster you go, the sooner you'll be out. You'll save water too. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hello, good evening. It has been a bit of a grim day for us today. Plenty of clouds around, spells of rain, although we have seen some clearer skies developing over the last few hours, but still the tone for the next few days. We are looking at showers, sometimes longer spells of rain, some blustery winds. It's staying unsettled, low pressure never too far away at the moment. That was today's rain clearing its way up towards the north, but you can see we still have that influence flowing in from the south. We've got those showers as we make our way into Friday. Again, some longer spells of rain rattling through, but it's staying blustery. They move through quickly and for now holding on to those breezes from the south still temperatures above the average for the time of year back to the here and now the showers are going to be hit and miss but sometimes on the sharper side still with us as we make our way overnight into the early hours merging together forming longer spells of rain staying blustery too and actually that combination will hold temperatures up no risk of a frost overnight just dropping down to around four or five degrees certainly in those more rural spots so into tomorrow morning, bright and breezy. Again, we are looking at a scattering of showers, not as intense as we've seen today, a bit more hit and miss. And in between, we are seeing some decent brighter breaks developing temperature wise as we head on into the afternoon highs around eight or nine degrees. Now, through the later part of Thursday and looking ahead into Friday, again, we do have that area of low pressure nearby, so things are looking a little bit more unsettled. As we head overnight into the early hours, the rain starts to set in. And again, we are looking at some heavy bursts on this as it pushes its way up from the southwest. So through the next few days, very much up and down. As we head into the weekend, as we look towards the new year, things will start to calm down with some brighter breaks in the mix. United Utility sponsors ITV Granada Weather. And that's the latest news and sport. We're back in Good Morning Britain from 6. Have a lovely evening. Good night.